President. Senator from North Dakota. Pleased to follow the uh, distinguished uh, senator from South Carolina and appreciate very much his remarks and how he does such a good job of, of really explaining why uh, this uh, tax relief is so very important. I rise uh, today as well to again talk about the need for uh, tax relief and to talk about uh, how our tax code is now both outdated, it's very complex, uh, and uh, again, as my esteemed colleague from South Carolina said, uh, it is time, it is past time uh, to provide tax relief for our nation's families, for our farmers, our ranchers, our small businesses. And that's what this is all about. Uh, passing this budget sets up our ability uh, to provide that very much needed tax relief for our hardworking citizens. Um, as I say, it's past time to modernize our outdated uh, American tax code and, and bring it into the 21st century. Uh, we need to do so to ensure that American businesses can compete on the global stage. It is a global economy, and we must compete. Um, and it's very much focused uh, on our efforts to bring that tax relief to middle-class families that have been struggling to get ahead and stay ahead over the last decade. As I say, the Senate this week is taking a, a very fir the first step and a very, very important step towards enacting pro-growth tax reform by passing a budget resolution, which provides a path towards improving our economic growth and putting more money back into the pockets of the hardworking American people. Uh, voting for this budget will enable us to move forward to enact that tax relief, uh, again, not only for our families, but for farmers, for ranchers, for small business across uh, this country. And small business is the absolute backbone of our economy. That's where the vast, vast majority of jobs are created. And that's very important to understand and realize that this is not just about tax relief, making sure that after taxes, uh, hardworking Americans keep more of their money in their pocket, again, is so eloquently uh, detailed by the senator from uh, South Carolina, but it's also about growing our economy, right? This is also pro-growth. This is about stimulating economic growth, meaning more jobs, and as the businesses that create those jobs, invest the capital, create those jobs, as they compete for labor, that also moves wages and income higher. So think about it. For that hardworking American, it's not only about reducing his or her tax burden, it's about increasing their wages and income. That's the rising tide that lifts all boats. So it's both. It's both about improving wages and income as well as reducing uh, the tax burden. The recent, uh, recently released tax blueprint proposes sweeping tax reform, tax relief that will benefit working families, small businesses across the country while promoting job creation, economic growth, and global competitiveness. This country was built on hard work by individuals and families who strive each and every day to make ends meet, provide for their loved ones, and plan for retirement. Uh, but this past decade has seen too many families struggling to get by. Current tax code is complex, it's riddled with loopholes, and that not only does nothing to help our hardworking families keep more of their money, it makes it very difficult to even fill out your tax return. Tax relief will help individuals and families in my state of North Dakota and across the country to get ahead by generating new jobs through economic growth, as I said, while also lowering their overall tax burden so that they keep more uh, of their paycheck. By dub, for example, by doubling the standard deduction, we'll eliminate taxes on the first $12,000 earned by an individual and $24,000 earned by a married couple, effectively establishing a 0% tax rate uh, up to $24,000. This means that the nearly 81% of North Dakotans that claim the standard deduction, again, my state, will see a significant increase in their take-home pay. And that's true across, across the country. Our tax framework aims to generate greater opportunities for small business owners and farmers, helping them to become more competitive. Remember, we all compete in a global economy now, 
So how do we help our farmers, our ranchers, our small businesses become more competitive? Small businesses represents nearly 96% of all employers in my state. And while we've fostered a business-friendly environment in North Dakota, the federal tax code continues to place undue burden uh, on our small businesses that operate across North Dakota and across the other 49 states. And that includes our farmers and ranchers who can pay a marginal tax rate as high as almost 45%, uh, which is nearly twice the rate in the rest of the industrialized world. The tax framework follows an example that we've set. I mean, the, the tax framework that we've proposed um, will restore economic opportunity and, as I say, enact a pro-growth tax code for our country. Last week, I hosted tax reform sessions uh, and roundtables across North Dakota to hear directly from our small businesses and also from ag leaders, our farm leaders, uh, on their priorities. And I want to talk about some of those priorities in agriculture uh, for just a minute. Agriculture is number one in North Dakota. We're a huge energy state as well, but agriculture is and always uh, will be number one in our state. And so when we talk about tax relief, uh, we need to talk about tax relief for our farmers and our ranchers. The right tax reform will help our farmers continue to provide the highest quality, lowest cost food supply in the world, which benefits every single American every single day. So that includes reducing the tax burden on these hardworking farmers and across the board small businesses, like I say, the job creators um, in our economy, in our country. And the biggest way we do that is we drop that rate for small business to 25%. That is a huge step forward, huge step, not only making our farms, ranches, small business across the country more uh, competitive, but generating that economic growth that is so important for job creation and higher wages. Uh, another important issue is in this framework, we eliminate the death tax or the estate tax. The death tax can result in double and sometimes triple taxation for income. For example, an individual's wages are taxed when they're earned. And interest, dividends, and capital gains from saved wages are taxed again. And so the death tax hit those earnings again when an individual dies. The average farmer today is 60 years old. The average farmer is 60 years old. And we continually see less and less young people able to get into the business of farming. With a tax code that disincentivizes passing down the family farm or to the uh, family farm to the next generation, how do we expect to feed our nation and, in fact, the world, which is exactly what we do? The estate tax also stifles economic growth and reduce, reduces our nation's competitiveness. A study by the Joint Economic Committee in 2012 found that the death tax had destroyed 1.1 trillion in capital stock in the economy. And of course, less capital investment means fewer jobs. Eliminating the death tax will encourage individuals to save, grow our economy, and according to the Tax Foundation, will increase the capital investment reinvested back into our economy. Additionally, many of our producers, our farmers, and other small businesses do not have access to the equity they need to operate, and so they rely heavily on debt financing to fund their businesses. And that's particularly true for new and beginning enterprises. Our tax code should incentivize our nation's entrepreneurs to start their businesses or farm operation and to allow them to grow and prosper. That's why it is a priority uh, certainly one of my priorities that as we do tax reform is that we maintain the ability of these businesses to deduct from their taxes the interest they pay on their debt in order to maintain the, a level playing field for small business. Think about a family farmer out there. When a family farmer needs capital, it's very hard for him to go out and get equity, right? So they have to borrow that money in order to buy equipment 
and invest in their enterprise. And that's why the interest deduction for farmers is so very, very important. They don't have access to that equity capital. They have to borrow their money. That's a huge cost of their operation. And that's why the interest deduction for our farmers and for our ranchers is so very important. Also expensing, and this is important for farmers and ranchers. This is important for all small businesses. Uh, being able to expense uh, what they, they invest into their business makes a huge, huge difference. Equipment, business supplies, other capital expenditures can be very, very costly. For example, a new combine nowadays probably costs about half a million dollars. Now, for a farmer to come up with a half a million dollars to buy a combine, which he obviously needs, is hard to do uh, unless they're able uh, to expense that investment and deduct the interest on the debt that goes with it. Uh, the tax framework we've proposed would allow businesses to immediately write off or expense the cost of new investment uh, in business assets, effectively reinvesting in our nation's businesses and help drive, drive economic growth. It will allow businesses to increase investment, again, increase job creation and wages. And I would propose that we've got expensing, full expensing for the first five years. That's great. But we should also, on a long-term basis, keep the Section 179 uh, expensing provision that we've worked very hard to make permanent. And that should be retained uh, in this new tax code for the long term. As we get beyond the first five years, uh, as part of uh, tax reform and tax relief that really works uh, for our ag sector. So these are some of the priorities we'll be working on to include in our tax relief package uh, to ensure that our farmers, our ranchers, and our ag industry continues to remain strong and really the leader worldwide uh, when, as I say, when it comes to, as I say, uh, not only producing the highest quality but the lowest cost food supply in the world that benefits every American every single day. Tax reform is about getting the American economy going and growing. It's about creating jobs, and it's about creating jobs here at home, not overseas, bringing that capital uh, that's stranded overseas and repatriating it back to America and creating jobs in this country. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to work together. Uh, we need to pass this budget and we need to pass tax reform for the hardworking people of North Dakota and for hardworking Americans across this great country. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.